All right, let's get started. Hello, and uh, welcome to this Tableau Public webinar. My name is Florian, and I'm a product specialist for Tableau Public based out of our Frankfurt office uh, here in Germany. So this is a uh, webinar on uh, calculations in uh, Tableau, and it's a more advanced, slightly more advanced webinar. But I think um, beginners might also benefit from it. At least you you will see you know what's possible in Tableau if you don't have that much experience with it. Uh, also, um, we'll ease our way into the topic. We'll start with very simple calculations and then move in, into more uh, advanced types of calculations. Um, the webinar title is uh, Mastering Calculations, um, but um, I, I don't know if we'll really master them after that one hour, but um, you should get a good overview of what's possible and, and what are the differences between the different types of calculations. And I think we, we hope to, to set you up onto that path of mastery so you can take that knowledge and try it out for yourself, um, practice, uh, build different kinds of visits with different kinds of calculations, and, and uh, hopefully um, it will be useful for you. Um, there's, a, there's a chat box where you can ask questions. So unfortunately, I uh, won't be able to, to hear you. Um, I think uh, participants are uh, on mute automatically, but um, if you want to ask a question, there's a chat box that you can use, and I'll try to uh, take a look at that every once once in a while. Um, there's also a Q&A box. Um, try not to use that, please. It uh, makes it a little more difficult for me. Um, so the chat box is the one that we want to use for questions. Um, I have a agenda slide, and these are the things we want to do. There's there are four different types of calculations uh, in Tableau, and I want to give a quick overview um, of all four of them. Um, it's a lot, um, so for some of them, we might just scratch the surface, but I think it's important to understand how they relate to each other and how they're different and why, why we have these four different types of um, calculations. Um, along the way, um, we'll also look at how you actually set up calculations. There are different ways to, to set up calculations in Tableau. Um, and we'll do a, a bit of revision in terms of how Tableau actually works, how it aggregates um, uh, across rows and, and how, it, um, how the level of detail, um, and we'll learn what that, what is, what that means, how the level of detail influences what we see and, and what's being calculated. So that's the plan. Um, I guess we'll, we'll dive right in. We've got a lot to cover, and um, I'm going to open up uh, Tableau. There we go. So I've got a data set uh, preloaded. This is um, looking at CO2 emissions uh, from different countries uh, over uh, many years, uh, I think going back to 1960. Um, those of you who've seen some of, some of our training videos or attended some of our other um, live webinars, you might have seen this data set uh, being used um, there. Here we've um, joined in uh, some other tables. Um, you can see we set up a couple of joints here. Um, we also have the population size of different countries, for example. Um, and we have this uh, dimension here that looks at income groups, um, uh, low income, middle income, high income, and so on. Um, so the important variables are uh, the income group, the population size of the country, the uh, CO2 emission in kilotons, uh, and then we have the year, the region, and the actual country. That's the kind of data set um, we want to use, and uh, it's obviously a very topical data set. Um, those of you who have been following the discussions around the U.S. leaving the Paris Agreement, 
And maybe that's the first question we can ask, where is the U.S. Uh, risk relation to the rest of the world? So let's um, open up a new sheet. Let's look at the different countries. Let's look at the CO2 emission. Um, and let's maybe focus on the most recent year, 2011. And let's sort everything. And we can see that the United States is in second place. Uh, only China is emitting more um, CO2. And that's also part of that, that story. I think some of the um, opponents of the Paris Agreement, they are complaining that some of the emerging markets um, uh, are actually the ones who are polluting a lot, and they, they don't have these strict targets yet. Um, some of these targets uh, that we've uh, phased in, they get a bit of slack at the moment because they're uh, emerging markets. So those are those are some of the, the issues. And um, there are, there are, I don't want to take a political stance here, but um, I think the, it, it's an interesting data set to, to use to, to look at those um, issues. Now, obviously, um, China is a lot bigger than the United States, uh, and we can see that if we add the population to the view, we can see that um, China has uh, over a billion people, um, and the U.S. is a lot smaller. Um, another big country up here in the top five is uh, India. Um, and so obviously, you know, if you want to compare countries, you might want to take this into account. Um, right? It doesn't really make sense to compare, you know, a big country like China with a small country like uh, the Netherlands. Um, and what you might want to do is you might want to divide um, the CO2 emission by the population size, right, to get the per person uh, emission. That's something that we can do uh, in Tableau by uh, creating a new calculated field. There are many different ways to set up a calculated field in Tableau. The most standard one is to go into this menu here and then say, create calculated field. When you do that, um, you get this box and it popped up on the wrong screen. Let me pull that over here. You get this um, box where you can enter your your uh, calculation. So I can say, give me the CO2, divide that by the population. Um, you notice down here, I get a confirmation that this is a valid calculation. And then I would probably want to give this a, a, a name, so I can call this uh, what do we call this? CO2 and kilotons per person. I'm going to say OK. And you should see this new variable um, here. Uh, and actually, if we go back to the data source, we now see a new uh, column in this data source. It's important to note this column has been added to the, the table here in the workbook. It is not being written back into the original uh, data file. Right? Tableau never writes into the original data file. It only establishes a connection. Um, but in the workbook, we now have a new column. And what's happening here is that for each row, we're calculating um, the per person CO2 emission, right? We're taking, uh, we're taking this value here and we're dividing it by this value and that will give us this. Uh, same thing here and so on for all the rows. And you, you notice some of them, they don't have any value for the CO2 emissions. And so when you divide now by some number, the result is also now. So basically, long story short, for each row, we're calculating this uh, amount. And we can now use that in our 
um, visualization, um, we can now drag this variable onto the view. And we can sort by this new uh, variable. And we can now see that the largest um, emitter in per capita terms uh, is Qatar, followed by Trinidad and Tobago, Kuwait, Luxembourg, and so on, Oman. Uh, we've got the United States over here. And then let's see where's China. China is all the way down here. So in per capita terms, China is actually not emitting that much. They're emitting 0 0.00671 kilotons per person. That's uh, actually a good point to, uh, to note here. This number is not really a very nice number. Let me actually add the numbers to the bar. These are all uh, 0, 0.00. They've all got a lot of digits behind uh, the uh, uh, the decimal point, and so what might make make more sense is to to look at it in terms of per one thousand people, so that would give us a nicer number. And so what we can do is we can go into the calculated field. You go into the menu here. We can say edit, so you can always edit your calculations. And what we can say is actually. Um, divide the population number by a thousand, and then let's change the text to per thousand people. Again, let's check the calculation is valid, and then we say OK. And now we get nicer figures here. So Qatar has 44 kilotons per 1,000 people. OK, so that's a simple uh, row level calculation, as we call it. Any uh, questions about that? I'm going to pause here for a second. No, no questions about that. Let me just um, show you another type of calculation, uh, also a row level type of row level calculation um, just so you, you get a better idea of what's possible. Um, you don't only, I mean, just now we did a mathematical operation. We, we divided and multiplied and so on. But you can also do uh, string operations. You can use text um, to create a new text field, for example. For instance, I could use um, country. And I'm just going to start typing here, and you see there's already some suggestions. I can go to the country. I hit the tab button, and I get my variable, my country variable. And I could add, um, say, a bracket. And then I could add maybe the region field. And you can drag things in, or you can type things in. There are different ways of create, setting up these calculations. Um, and I could um, then add another bracket. And this should give me country and region. Let's see what that looks like. Country and region. There you go. So now we've got Afghanistan and brackets part of the South Asia region. Right? So that's how you can uh, work with text. And there are different things you can do with text. Um, on the right-hand side here, we see a help menu. And uh, if you want to see what are the kind of things you can do with text, you can, for example, go to string. And uh, there are a lot of functions here that you can use. You can check whether it contains some substring, whether it starts with a certain letter, or you know, ends with a certain letter. You can look at the length of the, the text and so on. So lots of different things you can do with text. Um, all right, that's. Uh, uh, just a brief introduction to um, row-level calculations. Um, I'm going to take a look now at the chat box. Um, can you share the data set? Yes. Um, uh, send me an email afterwards if you um, want the data set, and I'll send it to you. Um, this looks too 
collaborate, can we provide a cleaner look using country and regions? I'm uh, not sure what you mean by that, but um, uh, happy to, uh, if you could clarify your question, happy to, to take that, um, look at that again later. Um, what I want to do next is um, I want to introduce uh, aggregate calculations and um, what we can do, for example, is we can now look at uh, the uh, CO2 emissions over time. So this was just the year 2011, right? But what about historical, the historical data? Who has been the largest emitter? Um, so if we, if we add uh, time and if we add uh, CO2, and if we break that up by country, and if we make a, a line chart, we can see that uh, China uh, has taken overtaken uh, the U.S. as the largest uh, emitter fairly recently. But historically speaking, the U.S. has been uh, for a very long time has been the largest uh, emitter of CO2. So, how does that add up? Um, in terms of our ranking, if we if we look at the cumulative um, output, so basically what happens when we remove the filter here? Uh, what if we look at all the years since 1960? So now we can see number one, clearly the United States, China is only second place. Uh, so historically speaking, the U.S. has been the, the largest emitter. So that's okay. If we move over one column, uh, we, we get a little problem because here we have the population and uh, we get these really large numbers that don't make any sense. And that's because now we're adding up the population for each year going back to 1960. Um, that adding up made sense when we looked at CO2 emissions because basically we were interested in the cumulative, you know, what has been added to the atmosphere year after year after year. And CO2 emissions is what we call a flow variable, right? Every year we're adding more and more um, to the atmosphere. But population is a stock variable. Uh, if we take a look at the population number of a country this year and from the year before, if we add them up, we're actually double counting a lot of people, most of the people, right? The changes in the two are very small. So as you, 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 you might have noticed, automatically Tableau tends to sum up variables unless you tell it otherwise. So CO2 is being summed up and that's okay, but the population number being summed up is a little problematic. So now we need to choose what, what, what population number do we want to look at? The most recent one, the maximum one, the average one. So we need to you know, think about that. So what we can do is we can change it to average, for example. And now we get more reasonable figures. So for example, uh, a billion people for China. Right. So that's okay. Um, we fix that by changing the aggregation method. But now moving over to the per person column, what are we going to do here? Um, if we want to look at the cumulative CO2 emission, but we want to set it in perspective to the population size, um, how are we going to do that? We don't want to add up the people. We, we don't mind adding up the CO2. So now we're in a bit of a bind, right? We, we don't know what we, you know, whichever one we choose, sum or average, you know, it's, it's not perfect. So this is where aggregate calculations come in. What we can actually do is we can um, specify within the calculation how we want things to be um, aggregated. So again, uh, let's actually, let me duplicate this variable. Um, you can always go in and duplicate. So now we have a second copy of the same calculated field. And let me go in there and say add it. And what I want to see is I want to see the sum of CO2. So I put a bracket around that. I say sum. But just take the average of the population. 
um, and then divide the two, right? So what we can say is um, cumulative CO2 since 1960 and kilotons per 1,000 people, because we will still want to put it in perspective of how big the country is, put it in relation to the size of the country, right? So if I say okay, and I'm gonna replace my variable here, we now get this number, and if I sort by this column, We kind of get a similar ranking for the United States as we had before, but I believe China should be, uh, where's China? China is over here, so quite far down. So that's um, basically what an aggregate calculation is. It lets you specify within the, um, within the calculation itself, how you want to aggregate it. Do you want to sum, do you want to average, do you want to take the maximum and so on. And you'll notice here, it won't have sum or average anymore. It will just say AGG, short for aggregate. So we know that this is now an aggregate calculation. And if we want to change the type of aggregation, we can't do that here. The, the menu no longer exists. We have to go into the actual calculation um, and specify how we want to aggregate the different variables. Um, you'll notice, again, it has highlighted the, the help box, it has highlighted the function that, that I clicked on just now. Uh, and if you want to look at what are the different aggregate functions, you can go into the menu here and you'll see the, uh, besides sum and average, there are the things you can do uh, including the median and the maximum, the minimum, standard deviation, and so on. Um, so those are the different kind of aggregate uh, functions that you can use. And just to go back to the uh, data source one more time, we can see it is still being calculated at a row level um, because you can aggregate over one row, right? Um, there's no problem with that. Um, but in the view, it will aggregate it over more, more rows. Uh, in our case, it will aggregate it um, over all the years for each country. So that's really uh, what an aggregate calculation is. And again, I'm gonna uh, stop for a short while and uh, see if there are any questions. I'm also gonna um, Put up this slide and let's just check where we are. I give you a few few minutes to type in any questions you might have. Um, so we've looked at row level calculations. We've done some mathematical operation. We've done a string calculation. You can also do logical operations, and we might do that later if we still have time. And you can do date calculations. Um, uh, you know, look at the duration between a start date and an end date, or something like that. Uh, we've looked at aggregate calculations and how you, um, with a normal row level calculation, you specify the aggregation and the, the peer, as we call it, the, the green uh, round thing that you put on your view. Um, and with aggregate calculations, you specify the level of aggregation within the calculation editor. So any questions on that? Oh. Um, yeah, you, you clarified that question on, uh, <laughs> you said the view was too, too cluttered, yes, um, and you asked whether you can use anything else uh, than a bar chart. Um, I'll try later, if, if we have time, I'll try to make it into something more pretty, but um, I think this bar chart, I, I agree, it's not the prettiest chart, but it's it's useful to compare things next to each other for, for understanding of how the um, calculations work. And, uh, I apologize if that's not the prettiest chart ever. <laughs> but maybe I can challenge you, use that data set and um, yeah, create something more pretty. See if you can make a nice uh, viz out of it and uh, send it back to me. And uh, I'm always happy to look at what, what people uh, do with uh, data and 
what uh, what kind of visits they come up with. Any other questions so far? No, nope, doesn't look like it. So with that, um, um, let's move on and let's move into some more complicated calculations. Um, let's uh, start with uh, level of detail calculations and then um, we'll also try to cover table calculations. Now, before we, um, before we do that, let me reiterate and, and um, give you a little uh, refresh on what's actually happening here. Um, so we've talked about how uh, Tableau, by default, you can switch those off, by the way, but by default, it tends to always aggregate things. Um, so for example, we're aggregating, we're summing the CO2, we're taking the average of the population, and then we're doing this aggregate calculation for this variable over here. Uh, and it, what that means is it, it's taking several rows within your data set, and it's calculating the sum, the average, or, or whatever you specify. Uh, as I said, in this case, we're, we're taking all the years for the different countries and summing them up, for example. And you can see that when you click on a bar like that, and if you go into this menu here, um, and there's, a, there's this tab here where you can look at the underlying data. And you can see it's taking all the rows for the United States, but we've got different years, right? So it's summing, summing the CO2 over all those years. Now, if I were to break this up differently, if I were to use, for example, the region, And let's look at North America here. And let's look at the underlying data. You can now see it's counting Bermuda, Canada, United States, Bermuda, Canada, United States. It's only three it's only three countries, but it's you know adding across all those three countries. And again, all the different years. But none of the countries from Europe because Europe is not part of this mark. Europe is over here. So the level of detail, as we called it, is defined by the types of dimensions that we use to cut up the data. So in this case, um, the region is the level of detail. And if we just look at CO2, maybe just to make it easier, that's a very convenient thing because it allows us to slice and dice the data, you know, at the speed of thought, as we always say. So I could add, you know, income group. Um, you know, now I can look at the combination of region and income group. And so if I look at this. Uh, combination here, low income and region Latin America. Again, I can look at the underlying data. Let's see what goes in here. It's just Haiti, right? Haiti and a whole bunch of years. Uh, if I look at this combination here, uh, it's Australia, Japan, and Korea, and New Zealand. So it's makes it very easy to slice and dice things, move things around, move this here, maybe add country after all, uh, you know, maybe put income group on color instead. You know, since this is a more advanced webinar, I think you, you've all come to like this ability of Tableau to, to you know, slice and dice things and aggregate um, as we move things around. Um, and um, as convenient as it is, sometimes this, uh, this process um, might be a bit too rigid. 
right? and we might want to break out of this logic. Right? The logic being we're summing CO2 for each mark, and each mark contains a bunch of rows, um, and the mark is determined by the intersection of my uh, dimensions, right? So I, I get a mark for each country and each income group, or each region and each income group. Um, so I get one different mark for each region and each income group. It's a combination of the two, the intersection of the two. And we might apply a filter, and so we're just going to throw out all the other rows that don't belong to 2011. Uh, that's another consideration. So that's how Tableau uh, does it. Um, and that works fine most of the time, but there are cases when um, it gets a bit problematic. And here's an example. Uh, let's, um, let's go back to our country table. Let's switch this again. And uh, we can use uh, at least region or color maybe. Doesn't really matter. Um, but let's say we want to, in the tool tip, so we know how well um, Japan is doing, but we now want to compare that, and we know which region it belongs to, but we also want the value for the region. We want to know how, how well or how badly is the region doing. Now, if I want to add that, I have a problem because, of course, I can show the region value if I break up my data by, by region, but as soon as I add country to the view, I break up my marks by country. I get one mark for each country, and I get the calculation for the country. So how can I have both at the same time? How can I have a mark for each country, but also show me the value for the associated region? And that's where um, level of detail calculations come in. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the year filter for now. And I'm going to add uh, a new calculated field. And let's, let's start with the global, global CO2. So global CO2. Now how would we do that? We would uh, look at the sum of uh, CO2. But I don't want to break it up by country, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put curly brackets around it. And whenever we use curly brackets, we're, go, um, uh, we're doing a level of detail calculation. And if you don't specify any level of detail, if you just leave the curly brackets like that, it will sum across the whole table, right? Um, and I can press OK. And I can add that to our tooltip. I added the tooltip. There it is, and I might move this down here. And so if I hover over mark, you can now see I get the value for Poland, but I also see the global value. And if I hover over the UK, I should see the same global value because it's global, right? Uh, just to drive home that point, if I move it onto the view, all the bars have the same length. Even though each bar is associated with a different country, the value is no longer associated with this country. The value is now the global um, value. So that's the power of uh, level of detail calculations. We can break out of that logic um, uh, that, that always calculates that mean, the logic by which everything is always calculated by the marks that we have on the view. Now, I started the question by, by talking about regions, so let's um, be a bit more specific. Let's add it this. Instead of comparing a country with a global value, let's start to compare a country with a regional value. Uh, for that, I actually now need to specify how I want to break it down. So I'm going to say fixed. And then I'm going to say region. And I hit tap to get the region variable. And then we put a colon. And after the colon, we have our normal calculation. Right? So that's um, the syntax of a 
level of detail calculation. You put curly brackets around it. So you, you take your normal calculation, you put curly brackets around it, and in front of it, you put a colon and you say fixed and then whatever dimension you want to fix it at. Um, and again, the check, the calculation is valid. Let's say OK. And if I put this on the tooltip, um, I now want region. We see now that South Africa has 14 million CO2 kilotons, and this is over all the years, right? We are not filtering by year at the moment. And the whole region has um, 21. So South Africa takes a large chunk of the whole region. Um, and if I find another uh, country from the same region, it should have the same value. Actually, let's just put it on the bars. Uh, let's maybe put region on color as well. And you can see how the different colored bars, they all have the same value, right? Because all the different regions have the same value. So that's how you would um, calculate the regional a benchmark value. And that's that's what's really important in, in storytelling um, with data. It's it's often helpful to have some sort of benchmark because how do I know that, you know, the value for Brazil, is Brazil doing well? You know, I, I don't know unless I can compare it to maybe like a regional benchmark or something like that. So that's, that's really how um, level of detail calculations uh, work. Um, I'm going to pause again, give you some time to um, ask questions, and I'm going to show again uh, the slide. So we're at level of detail calculations right now. But I also want to point out um, that we've only looked at two different types of level of detail calculations so far. And um, we're going to have to see if we have time to, to cover the other ones. But they're quite similar. So the fixed one that we just used is the one that uh, I find personally um, the most e the, sim the easiest to understand, um, and it's also the one that I use, the one that I use most often. Um, but we also have exclude and include, and basically what these do is they take all the other dimensions that are already on the view, and then you tell Tableau take all these that are on the view but add another dimension uh, to define the level of detail, right? Um, so when you use include, you're including another dimension so you, you arrive at a finer level of detail because you're breaking it down even more. Um, I don't know, industry, age group, and gender. So you're breaking it down by also by gender. So you add another variable to the view. Oh, that's not on the view. You add it to the calculation. And exclude, with exclude, you can take one out of the ones that are in the view when you're doing the calculation. So I could have actually achieved the same thing um, by, if I wanted to do the world, the world, the global average, I could have just excluded country and region because these are the two in the view and it would have given me, given me the world, or the world sum. I think we did the sum, not the average. Um, but the same applies if you wanted to do an average. Uh, if I wanted to do the uh, region, I could, if I have region on my view and country on my view, I could take out, so I could exclude country, and it would then just leave region to do the calculations. Actually, let's try that real quick. I think we have the time. Um, so, uh, let me duplicate this one, and let me edit that. So instead of fixed region, I think we should be able to get the same result by excluding country. Because region is there and country is there, right now it 
showing me marks for the intersection of country and region. If I take out country, it should just leave region. Let's try that. Yeah, so it's giving us the same the same numbers. Okay. So um, this one is a bit more flexible when I ch but I have to be careful now because when I change my you know if I take this off color for example um, this one now is giving me the global where this one is still fixed at region because he said fixed right so you need to be careful um, which one you use sometimes the same results can be achieved in different ways but the fixed obviously one uh, is the one that where you, you're less prone to make errors because when you move things around, um, it will always be fixed. Another difference to mention it that is that the fixed comes earlier in the order of things being processed, uh, whereas include and exclude comes after the so-called dimension filters. Uh, this is getting very technical now, but basically Tableau does everything in an order. It you know first creates an extract, it creates a, then you have a context filter, then you do dimension filters, then if you have any measure filters, and then at the last, last uh, step, it does table calculation filters. And so depending on what type of level of detail calculation you use, it might get filtered out or not. Um, just to show you an example, if I go back to what we just had here, two different types of regional values. If I were to add year to the filters, and just focus on the last year. Uh, they, they are now giving us different values because the fixed calculation um, is happening before the filter. So basically it still includes all the years, even though we have a filter, whereas the uh, exclude calculation is happening after the filter, so it is actually affected by the filter. It's only showing us the 2011 values. So that's another difference between the two different types of uh, table calculations. All right, that was a lot, and um, I'm gonna take a few minutes now to take questions. Um, I'm happy to repeat what I said if any of that was not clear. Um, I'm gonna show that slide again so you can digest that. So there was a question a little earlier, I guess I missed that. Um, can we slice the countries in four groups based on CO2? Uh, I think I know what you're asking. I think you're saying let's do some kind of high, medium, low CO2 group. Uh, that should be possible. So if we um, look at CO2, we can create a bin. get a bin. Let's see how many bins we got. Uh, those are a lot of bins. Uh, we got some now values to deal with, but in theory, that's how you, you might be able to do it. Um, Let's get rid of the nows. One, two, three, four, five, almost there. But all right, where is this zero? Oh, it's the, the, yeah, the smallest bin, I guess. So that's how you do it. And then, of course, you can use that in combination with region, um, with uh, income group. And now you have three dimensions that give you the level of detail, right? The intersection of all of those. Um, I hope that answers your question. Yes, okay, great. Uh -huh. Sequence of filters, okay, yeah, I'll explain that one more time. Sequence of filters. So there are different types of filters in uh, Tableau. Um, you can filter at the data source level, so you can add a filter here. And basically, 
it's not going to come into any of the calculations. It's just going to, before it even looks at the data, it just shows all of the rows out that you don't want. Um, then the more standard filters that we typically use are these sort of dimension filters, um, which typically filter out, so if I add, for example, a region here, um, and let's just focus on Latin America. For most purposes, they filter out, you know, exactly what we want. So we wanted to throw away everything that's not Latin America. But it might get problematic when we're calculating the regional or the global level, for example, as we did with those level of detail calculation. Because now the question is, when we do this global, let's do the global one again, because that was pretty simple. So we just use the curly brackets, sum of CO2. So this curly bracket is telling us sum over all of the rows in the data set. The question now is, do we mean all the rows in the data set or all the rows that have been left over by, by these filters, right? And that's something you need to take into account. Uh, and if you were to use a, a data source filter, for example, it would be very clear. It would just use the rows that have been left over from the data source filter. This filter does not affect a normal level of detail calculation. So this is actually giving us the value now for the whole world, even though we're just looking at Latin America. So you look at the value here, one, zero, 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 one, two, whatever. If I take away the region filter, it's still the same value. It's not affected by the region filter. Why? Because the fixed uh, calculation comes before the dimension filter is being applied. There are two ways to get out of this is I could use a another type of calculation, an include exclude calculation that will move the calculation after the dimension filter in the order of things. Or I could change the dimension filter to an extract filter or context filter, which are basically happening earlier in the process. So if I were to use my region again, Latin America. Watch this number over here when I say um, add to context. You see this number change? So I added this to context. I moved this filter up in the hierarchy of, of how soon calculations happen. So now first the filter is applied, then the level of detail calculation is being done. So that's, um, that's where, where the order of operations comes in in, in Tableau. Okay, cool. Any other questions? No? Okay, great. Then we have got 10 more minutes um, and we still have one more uh, block to cover. Um, let me go back to our agenda. And that's uh, table calculations. Um, table calculations, they share some uh, commonalities with uh, level of detail calculations, but they also allow us to do some other uh, things and table calculations. Um, actually, let me let me give you an example, and then we'll, we'll talk about the logic. So, if we look at our list again, um, uh, and let's look at the year. Um, if we look at our list of countries again, you've seen me scroll down quite a few times to see where's China, where's India, you know, where some countries, the long list of countries. And when you scroll down, you kind of keep, lose track of things. So wouldn't it be nice to show the rank so we can say, you know, which country is number one, which country is number five, which country is number 25. Um, so um, we can very easily uh, uh, show a rank using a table calculation. Um, by uh, say like adding it to the label. So we want the CO2, we add it to the label. So it's the same that we're using for the, for the bar chart. 
But now I can click onto this thing, uh, open the menu, and I can say quick table calculation rank. And I'm going to get rid of the region for a second just to show you the rank, how quickly you know I did the rank. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me remove this clear table calculation, and now we're back to the actual figures, CO2, the CO2 values. Um, so you can quickly convert an actual figure into a rank or a percentage or you know something else. Um, logically, what's happening is, uh, think about it, if you wanted to calculate the rank by hand, how would you do it? You'd first build this view, right? You would choose the country, you would choose the CO2, you would sum it up over all the years maybe. Um, and then once you've got the actual values, you would then start to align them like we did here in the order of you know, how much CO2 is in it. And then you would start to count, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a second level of calculation really. It's like you first calculate the sum of the CO2 and then in the second step you compare them. You know, is Brazil, is that more or less than the UK? Oh, it's less, so it's one rank below, right? You'd order them and compare them and assign them a rank. Now, whenever you find yourself in this sort of situation where you first need some kind of sum and then, or some kind of other aggregation, and then you you want to, to do another kind of thinking, you know, how do they compare across different marks again? So we're breaking out of the marks again. We need to compare across different marks. But we also want to do a second level calculation. Whenever you have that situation, chances are that a table calculation might help you. So again, I'm going to show you to do the how to do the table calculation. I'll go into the menu here and I'll say quick table calculation rank. Right. That's kind of the the thing you can do with table calculation. You might have noticed when I had region on color, it was getting a little confusing. That's why I quickly moved it away. Let me move it back in. Um, and let's look at what's happening now. Uh, when I have region on color, I get a one, a one, a one, a one, a one, a two, a two, a three, a one, a four. If you think about it for a while, what you realize is it's now calculating the rank for each region. So China it has a, the largest bar for the Asia region. Japan has the second largest bar for the orange uh, Asia region. Right? Russia, the first one for Europe. Germany, the second one for Europe, and so on. So that might be helpful depending on, you know, what you want to do, or it might be not what you want to do. So in that case, you have to tell Tableau, well, actually, that's not what I wanted. And what you have to do is you have to go into the menu. Oh, and by the way, I should have uh, pointed this out. Once you use a table calculation, you get this little delta symbol here that uh, indicates that this is a um, table calculation. If you go in here and you say, um, well, you can use compute using, but I'll be very honest with you. I hardly ever use this uh, menu. I don't really know what I, I usually don't know what I need to choose here. Um, I find it a lot and I just, you know, for me this is try and error, trial and error really, but what I find much more useful is this menu called edit table calculation where you can really specify um, what, it, what you want to do. Um, and basically what you what you want, want to do is you want to specify exactly what dimensions you want to use in your table calculation. And currently what it is saying is use the country to calculate the rank, so rank by country, but don't include the region. So basically that means stop when there's a new region and start over again. Right? That's why we get a one for each of the top regional emitters and a two for the second in each region and so on. If we want to run through both country and region, we also need to tick region. And now if I close this, I should get what we wanted initially. You want the one, two, three, four, five, 
all the way down to number 100 something, 200 even. So that's how you specify. Now again, I go into the menu and I say add a table calculation, and I you know select what variables do I want. Um, there is a little uh, screenshot I saw the other day, a little picture that somebody created. Um, uh, I saw that on Twitter the other day, and I found that very helpful. So this menu, basically, what it tells us is um, for each of the ones that we don't tick, break it up by the category, break it up by subcategory, for each of those, Calculate the percent of total, for example, or the rank in our case, and use the dimensions that have been ticked here um, to, 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 to actually do the calculation. That's very helpful for me to, to, to think about those. Um, I, I'm happy to share this. Uh, it's, a, it's a long link, but I'm happy to share this uh, link. Um, send me an email. Actually, I might just put it in the chat box so you have it right now. <clears throat> so that's how table calculations work. Um, we've only looked at one. Let me maybe show you. We've got three more minutes. Um, let me maybe show you one more type of table calculation just so you get an idea of what's possible. Um, let's look at the CO2 over time. But now, instead of looking at the annual emission, let's look at the historical, the total, how it has added up over time, the cumulative, right, that we've talked about before. Uh, each year we're adding, this is a flow variable again, uh, each year we're adding to the stock of total in CO2 that's been emitted to, uh, into the atmosphere. So we can do that if we go into the menu of our CO2 variable, we can say quick table calculation uh, it's called running total, not cumulative, but it's the same thing, running total. And now I get this very steep line for the United States, and we can see how China, historically speaking, it's still quite far away from the U.S., but it has overtaken the euro area, for example. That's another quick table calculation that you can do. Um, another one that I use very often is... Um, percent of total, um, percent difference, that's interesting too. It's basically, if you make this a bar chart, um, and if we add it to color as well, you can see now, these are the changes, you know, have we increased this globally now from one year to another, or have we decreased? So is it negative to growth or positive? So that's another very popular one. But different kinds of things, and again, all of these have in common that you're thinking across different marks because to look at the percent difference, you need to first know the current year and you need to know the previous year and you need to make that comparison between the two years, right? So you need to break out of that, that box. You need to um, think beyond just one mark. You need to compare different kinds of marks with each other. Um, same thing with percent of total. You want the total of all, and then you want to compare one mark to the total, things like that. You can also, if you want to have more options, so these are the so-called quick table calculations. You can also, when you set up a calculated field, uh, write them into this formula. If you go into the menu here, you can see what are the different types of table calculations that you can use. You see there's a, you know something like window average, some kind of moving average, uh, you know things like that, rank as we looked at, and so on. So with that, um, it's uh, half past, so um, uh, we're out of time technically. Um, I still want to give you a few more minutes for questions, so I'm going to stay on the line for like uh, another five minutes or so.